Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, my name is V. In this video, I'll be talking about what it's like working in biomedical research in academia versus industry in the UK. Some of the topics I'll be covering include job titles and respective duties, salary, benefits, so things like bonuses, insurance, and also maternity leave, and finally, work culture and environment. I currently work as a research assistant in Cambridge and finished my master's in biomedical science not too long ago. So as a quick disclaimer, I don't personally have any experience working in industry, but I have spoken to friends and colleagues who have worked worked in a range of biotech, biopharma, and also life science consultancy companies to try and give you a more balanced perspective on both sides. Different institutions and companies may have different job titles for people who do very similar things. For example, someone who assists in a type of servicing like genotyping, for example, may be called a research assistant in an academic lab, but may be called something else like a research scientist in a biotech company, for example. So that's just something to keep in mind if you are applying for jobs. It just goes to say that it's more important to read the job description rather than judging a job posting by the job title itself. So in this video, I'll just be using the more generic job title names. So first up, we have the research assistant. This is someone who helps out with experiments in the lab and data analysis if needed. I actually made a more detailed video on that, which I'll link up above in the cards, where I talk about what it's like being a research assistant working in academia. In academia, a research assistant tends to work very closely with their direct supervisor or line manager. You tend to follow direct instructions to do the necessary experiments that is needed for your project. Experiments can range from tissue culture, mini preps, maxi preps, cloning, and sequencing, but this usually just depends on the type of research that you're working on. In industry, depending on whether you're working in a smaller biotech company or a larger biopharmaceutical company, your role as a research assistant might differ a little bit. Generally speaking, a company is often divided into groups along the pipeline. For example, there may be one group working on target discovery, another on target validation, another group on drug screening, and there may even be a team dedicated to just generating knockout mice. Usually, the larger the company, the more specialized the different groups. As a research assistant, you'll most likely be providing a service to another research group within the company. For example, if you're within the drug screening team, a senior staff scientist from the breast cancer research group may ask you to screen a set of drugs against a target that they found for breast cancer. You perform the screening and analysis and then you send the results back. So next up we have the research technician, which is relatively similar to the research assistant except you don't necessarily have a direct supervisor. A lab technician may also help with performing experiments, but this can depend on their experience and also whether or not there are overlapping duties within the lab. In both academia and industry, a research technician's job usually focuses on the maintenance of the lab. So things like making sure that all the equipment are working and also placing orders for necessary consumables or reagents. The lab manager pretty much covers most things to ensure that the lab runs smoothly. So this can include things like making sure that all staff have completed their health and safety training, placing orders for consumables or reagents, purchasing software licenses like maybe GraphPad Prism for anyone who needs it within the lab, and knowing who to contact in different situations, and occasionally helping out with lab experiments. And next is the PhD student. As a PhD student in academia, lab funding plays a huge role. If your group lacks funding, it's an extra hurdle if you're trying to do experiments. You may not have the reagents or consumables or even the right facilities to give you the best results. If your lab has the money, that's just one less thing to worry about. And also depending on whether the fact your PI likes taking on PhD students, their funding and also the timing of other applicants perhaps, you may or may not be the only PhD student in that group at that period of time. And this may be a difficult thing because a huge part of getting through a PhD is the moral support you get from your peers and also like-minded people. It really does help when there's a mutual understanding between people who are going through a similar situation to you. In industry, it's not actually that common for a smaller biotech company to host PhD students. In larger biopharma companies, there's normally an intake of PhD students at the start of an academic year. So going through a PhD together with a group of like-minded people just makes it a lot more bearable and enjoyable. And usually the next stage after a PhD, if you continue in research, is often a postdoc. In academia, there tends to be a lot of writing involved and publishing is also a requirement. Experiment planning-wise, you don't necessarily need to work in a group, so this makes things from experiments and also your own timing a bit more flexible. In industry, there's a lot more teamwork between postdocs. Although there's less writing required, there's often a lot more presentations to communicate the research that you're doing. Publishing is not always as urgent compared to academia, but this differs from company to company. The next few positions are of a higher rank and are usually people who have completed a PhD and have had years of experience. 
So these are the research associate or staff scientist, senior research associate or senior staff scientist, your PI, so principal investigator, and finally the director of faculty or department. What is pretty much the same between both sectors is that there is a clear hierarchy. So usually the higher position that you hold, the higher the salary. And you also tend to hold more of a managerial position, meaning it's less hands-on in the lab and more planning for the research and also securing grants. It's also worth mentioning that there are a bunch of other people involved, but I mainly elaborated on the ones that are directly involved in the research and development team. In both academia and industry, there are obviously people within the human resource team, the goods and service, so those that are responsible for the delivery of supplies and things to your lab, and then IT. In industry, depending on the size of your company, there may be a few more positions. One is an in-house lawyer to advise on patenting. So this is usually to avoid filing patents that have already been filed by competitors in your field. Oftentimes, there's also a clinical trial scientist. So if there's a drug that's ready to enter phase one of trials or progress within the pipeline, then this is your go-to person. There may also be a data scientist and then marketing and business development team if there's a drug that your company is developing that's ready to enter the market. In terms of salary, working in industry generally earns you more than working in academia. In academia, your salary does not increase a lot even with higher positions. For example, you may earn around 25 to 30k a year as a research assistant, which is one of the lower grade positions. And this does not increase much even if you are a postdoc, where you earn around 35k a year. And keep in mind that this is probably after 3 to 4 years of doing your PhD. Where in the UK, you're still considered a student and you roughly only earn a stipend of 15 to 16k a year. Unless you're in London, in which case for all positions, you'll be paid a little bit extra for the London living cost. So even with these extra years of experience and expertise, your salary does not increase significantly. Only as a PI or a director will you earn a much higher paying salary. In industry, entry-level positions like a research assistant or technician earn around 30 plus k a year. Doing a PhD in industry in the UK still means that you're a student, but you may earn slightly more compared to academia. And I think it is approximately 19k a year, but this may vary depending on the company. As a postdoc, your salary is around 40k, and as a senior scientist, your salary may be around 60k. But again, this varies from company to company. Working in industry may also earn you additional cash or stock bonuses. According to my very quick research on Glassdoor, larger companies like GSK, for example, pay 3k in cash bonus and sometimes 1 to 2k in stock bonuses. Smaller biotech companies may also provide cash bonuses, but not necessarily stock bonuses depending on whether or not they are profitable yet. In academia, there's not really a thing like bonuses. The salary is paid from the grant funding that's secured by your PI. It's the same pool of money that's used to buy consumables, reagents, and also, of course, pay your salary. And because money is quite tight, it is unlikely that any staff would get an annual bonus. Aside from cash and stock bonuses, there are also additional benefits to working in academia or industry. Annual leave at the university I work at is actually pretty good. It's 33 days, excluding public holidays in the UK. Oftentimes, a lot of universities will also subsidize housing and transport. So for example, a university may actually own a number of properties within the area. And in my case, the university actually subsidized around 10 to 15% of my rent. There also tends to be cheaper bus passes, or sometimes these transports are free. And because Cambridge is pretty much a cycling city, they often offer free bike repair services. In industry, you get different benefits like health insurance, so this can cover your visit to the dentist or even get you a cheaper membership at the gym. There are often better pension schemes compared to academia, and as mentioned before, there are often also cash and stock bonuses. And the last point that I'd like to touch on is that maternity leave is often more supported. This, of course, depends a lot on the culture of the lab. And although there have recently been paid paternity leave before and after pregnancy included in funding applications, there's a lack of continuity in paternity leave policies in universities. And this often causes a lot of ambiguity, especially for women. In academia, you're often rewarded for working very long hours and producing very good data and results. Especially when you're a PhD or postdoc, which is usually the age or the point in life that a number of women tend to want children. There's often a lot of uneasy tension and guilt between wanting to put in time and also care for your work and your children. And even in today's society, women are found to shoulder the responsibility of raising their child. And a lot of this also has to do with the support of the PI. So whether or not they'd be financially assisted during paternity leave or whether they'd even be hired after that. This could be a whole video on its own, but I'll just wrap it up at in industry, it's easier to find a part-time replacement for someone who is on paternity leave. In academia, there may be a lot of uncertainty if you are contract-based because success is very much defined by working hours and also data. 
Finally, on to work culture and lab environment. Working hours tend to be a lot more flexible in academia, as long as you meet your minimum working hours, which is usually around 37 to 40 hours a week. When you want to come in is usually up to you, but this is of course dependent on whether or not you're working under a supervisor. In industry, it tends to be very classic 9 to 5, but this of course depends on the company. In academia, you also tend to have a lot more control over the direction of your research project. You come up with your own hypothesis, design your own experiments, and generally set your own deadlines, of course while still producing enough results by the time the grant ends. In industry, you often do research that contributes to the company's bigger plans, so you're usually often told more or less what to do. Another point is that in academia, it's often less strict in the labs, and I mean you still wear lab coats and gloves and whatnot, but a lot of the time people just walk in and out of the labs if they want to check on their experiments, and that's completely okay. In larger biopharmaceutical companies, for example, they might be a lot more strict about this especially if you're dealing with more fragile cell lines like stem cells for example or dealing with really expensive machinery like mass spectrometry. So that's it on this video about biomedical research in academia versus industry. I hope you found it helpful. Please like and subscribe if you're interested in all things biomedical science related, whether it's university or job applications, lab experience, or even vlogs. I try to cover a comprehensive range into life as a biomedical science researcher. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye!